Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, it also uh, gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce, in addition to all the wonderful students and faculty from Camosun, um, the uh, members of the Federation of Post-Secondary Educators of, of British Columbia, uh, Cindy Oliver, the president of FIPSI, uh, Jason Brown, the first pri vice president of FIPSI, uh, Frank Costco, second vice president of FIPSI, Aaron Rosman, the president of the Douglas College Faculty Association, Terry Van Steenberg, uh, the president of the, Quali uh, the Quantlin Faculty Association, and Karen Short, uh, president of the Vancouver Community College uh, Faculty Association. In addition, we have Phil Legg, who is a staff person with the Federation of Post-Secondary Educators. They're all over here as well because they want to impress upon all of us in the legislature how important it is that we continue to support English language learning programs in British Columbia. So they have brought senior people from across British Columbia and from their association uh, here to see the debate today. So I hope you will also make all of them feel very, very welcome. Member for Burnley Deer Lake on Thank motion you. number 10. On the motion. Uh, this motion, Honorable Speaker, is resolved that this House recognizes the importance of public post secondary English language learning programs to a skilled labor force in BC and to the health of the provincial economy as a, low, as a whole. Madam Speaker, in essence, we are talking about the, the critical importance to Canadian immigrants of continuing to provide a variety of higher level English language programs at the college and university level. These are programs serving 9,000 students a year, programs that integrate with or lead to other post-secondary programs and that allows students to utilize all the skills and, and experiences that we as a country recognize when we encourage people to make the often difficult decision to make Canada their home, often believing that they would make a better life for themselves and for their children. These are people who want to work hard, want to contribute, and who have the skills to do so, but who face one major hurdle to maximizing that potential, and that is the ability to communicate effectively, particularly in the workplace and in their professional lives. English language proficiency is fundamental to success for the vast majority of ELL students in our post-secondary institutions who intend usually to take further college and university training or, or who already have foreign degrees and credentials that they want to put to work in British Columbia. What we have heard over and over is that these courses are like steps on a ladder and if you take away the first rungs, there is no way to climb that ladder. For decades, colleges in British Columbia, for 40 years at Vancouver Community College, at Camosun College, Kwantlen Polytechnic University, Douglas College, Thompson Rivers and others, have been providing accessible, high quality, professionally delivered, attested, refined English language learning courses to thousands of students every year. Two and a half years ago, the federal government announced that its funding of these programs would cease. Interim funding by provincial government uh, has been provided, but there has been no lasting solution to, for these critical programs, and now they face closure. It raises the question, Ma Mr. Speaker, about why, when the provincial government has had this amount of time to solve this problem, it has not. The result is that 9,000 students are about to lose these critical programs. That includes 2,200 students at the largest provider of uh, college English language learning programs, that's VCC. Those students and their teachers were so concerned that last month hundreds of them came to the legislature to talk to government. And today we have students from Camosun and their teachers as well, as we've noticed. And FIPSI, whose teachers teach thousands of students around this province. And if you listen to the hundreds of stories from the students, they are stories of hope. They are stories of gratitude, and they are stories of, su of success. And now they have turned to please. And I want to read just one from Philippe Muriel of Camosun. I am from Colombia. I studied ESL for 12 months at Camosun. I am now enrolled in the Baccalaureate of Science of Nursing program at Camosun in New Vic. My goal is to finish 
my degree in nursing and work my way to med school in order to become a family doctor. If I did not have the opportunity to study ESL at a high level, I would not be able to materialize my dreams and be useful to this beautiful country. It is a story that is repeated in different ways over and over. Mr. Speaker, it is the 11th hour. Short-sighted decisions to axe these programs, once they are lost, will be very difficult or impossible to reinstate. Students, instructors, leaders at the colleges, and community, le community leaders and the opposition have all said this is a huge mistake. The provincial government response has been, instead of finding a solution, to point students to not-for-profit community programs. Those programs are not a solution. They do not provide the level of its sophistication. They do not provide the integration and the entry to college programs. They do not provide that ladder. These are programs that have been developed and refined over decades within the very accountable, professional, and stringent academic confines of universities and colleges. Upper level reading, writing, college prep courses, grammar courses, pronunciation programs, professional advancement programs. Thank you, member. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Vancouver, Mount Pleasant. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. As I listen to the members, what am I hearing? I'm hearing excuses after excuses to say, not me, look to the federal government. And then all at the same time, they say, but look, we do support ELL programs. We do support ESL programs. So if that is true, then why doesn't the government step up right now and fund the $22 million shortfall for the post-secondary institutions who are providing intermediate, advanced, and career-specific English learning programs in their institutions? If you don't do that, Mr. Speaker, the truth of the matter is that these students that are sitting here today, some 50 of them, I believe from Camosa, the others, 8,950 across the province of British Columbia, will not get access to the program that they need to be successful independently in British Columbia. Immigrants come to this community, why? because they want a better alternative. They want to do better for themselves and for their families. And they need language training. I know that because I am a ESL student in the elementary school system. I know that because my family, my dad, went through VCC, Vancouver Community College, to get access to English, to get a job in his profession. I know that because I have friends who are in that system and I know people who are in that system today. So how can we make a difference as a legislator? We have a choice before us. Stand up and yes, not just say to the federal government that we're disappointed that you're gonna do away with the funding. We cut, kick their door down and say not good enough. And in the meantime, we say the province will step up Alberta has done it, Ontario's done it, other provinces have done it. Why can't we? We're talking about $22 million to make it happen. Next year, members, at least you think otherwise. Students will not have access to this program. That's 2,200 people from Vancouver Community College. They will be left out in the cold without access to the programs that they need to get the jobs to support themselves and their families. I heard the member from Burnaby North and the members from government say that we have a skilled labor shortage. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. In fact, statistics actually tell us that the top 60 occupations that require training are the very training that are provided by the post-secondary institutions, some of whom are going to lose this funding and they will not be able to train their students to access those programs and to access those jobs. We're talking about construction managers, welders, related machine operators, construction millwrights, industrial mechanics, senior managers, Transport in transportation, tra in production, in construction, in utilities, in heavy-duty equipment me mechanics, and so on. 
they could fill the labor skill shortage if they can access these programs. And we're not doing it. We're just saying, oh, gee, but we're just so disappointed. Well, as my good colleague, the member from Swan Lake, has said, don't be a passive spectator on this. Step up and do something. Challenge your government. The, minist the, minist uh, the committee for finance traveled the province and heard from people across British Columbia. In fact, they put forward a recommendation to say that ESL should be funded. Now, when we say ESL should be funded, let us be clear about what that means. We're not just talking about the e entry level programming into ESL. We're not talking just about the link program that I know some member referred to and the Minister of Advanced, Advanced Education has referred to that they're providing. Those are programs that should be provided as a first step. But the ladders of opportunities go beyond the first steps, and it has to go to the post-secondary institutions where people can get intermediate, advanced training, career-specific training, profession-specific training to move beyond this level. We have all seen it in our communities. We see people who are talented that should not be working in the fields that they are today. We know engineers who are working as cap cab drivers. Thank we you, know member. people who are doctors who are working in the agriculture industry. Thank you, we member. should do better and fund the $22 million to end this disgrace right now.